Hello, venerable vintage votaries. This time, something a little less time-worn. Macrobrands haven't been able to catch my attention in the past too often, I must admit. Or at least for nothing but a short period of enthusiasm, which hasn't led to an actual purchase yet. There are a few exceptions, of course. And that's the one I'd like to tell you about today. My name is Jan, and welcome to the Time Worn channel. So why this one, and not a Baltic or any of the hot microbrands? Well, the microbrands that are usually trendy are the ones that do things very well, but not necessarily groundbreaking in terms of design. I mean, a, a Baltic MR01 is undoubtedly beautiful and appealing, but also not really truly funky. And you could argue that a Baltic is beyond micro as a brand right now. What do you think? Which are your current microbrand favorites we should maybe consider in the future? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, let's talk about Tetra. This one right here is a loner from a friend, who made me aware of this small brand in the first place. Never heard of them before, but this watch is easy to spot in a lineup of the typical watch collection suspects, and therefore we started chatting about it. Tetra started in 2017. It is an Italian endeavor and a passion project. Usually the latter attribute is thrown onto plenty of micros, but I think the design right here tells you already that they tried to do things very differently. Their homepage doesn't give you a lot of marketing crap, and I think that is beautiful. And you need to do a little digging if you want to find the explanation for the brand name and logo. The Tetra watch project was the brainchild of Michael Aversano, a huge watch enthusiast from an early age, who has endured a horrendous traffic accident, which didn't hinder but even furthered his motivation to fulfill his design ideas for a very personal watch. The name Tetra, their logo, and the four-corner case shape is a reference to the founder's condition, known as tetraplegia, after the accident. Quite a heavy undertone, but the message of this project is, and I wish to quote here, to put yourself out there despite the obstacles life may hold in store. I don't know about you, but I was surprised by that origin story, and it spoke to me. But let's talk about the watch itself. The case is a nice work of art in my opinion. Stainless steel with a very eccentric shape to begin with, which gives it an almost tetragonal look at first glance, which then transforms into an intriguing frame for the round bezel on second look. The ladder carries eight screws, while the corners carry four more. Decorative screws on the front are nothing new, but the overall shape definitely is. Venturing even further in terms of expressive design, the whole surface of the case was abrasively hand decorated on all sides. This is optional, or rather was optional, because this was only done for a small series of vintage versions of this Diver 1, limited to 50 pieces, also hand engraved on the back. If you look up their current offerings, you find the same case shape, but with a cleaner, untouched stainless steel or even PVD coated surface. The diameter measures 40 mm across 3 and 9 o'clock, which quickly increases to 48 mm if you include the corners across 10 and 4 o'clock. 50mm from lug to lug, while the screw-in lugs are nicely sculpted and have a lug width of 22mm. This version weighs 110 grams and it came on a soft brown leather strap to go with the vintage theme, with a signed buckle of course. But again, the current lineup also offers steel bracelets, which I know is very important for many viewers when it comes to purchasing a dive watch. The crown on this one is definitely worth mentioning. It's quite elongated and sits comfortably between the two corners. It provides an excellent grip with a prominent and very tactile knurling. The 12mm in height provide a slim profile, and all in all, I like the dimensions. Usually Italian watch design not only tends to be bold, but they are also often quite chunky in my experience. This one is different. It wears sleek, and that complements the overall wrist presence without laying it on too thick, quite literally. On the dial, I personally enjoy the forced vintage aesthetics on this one. From the yellow accents on the applied hour indices to the spotted loom on the intriguingly designed hands. The loom does take the vintage approach quite literally, as it is only visible partially. But legibility at night is still provided, I would say. The dial has a very interesting shade of teal with a structured surface. There are some minor irregularities on the dial, which I think is intentional on the vintage inspired ones though. On the back, the logo takes center stage, together with the continuation of the decorative and prominent screws. Inside, this one right here has a Miyoda 8215, ticking away at 21,600 amplitudes per hour. A cost-efficient choice to offer a unique case design with an automatic heart. This movement has some quirks, which I mentioned in another video. In short, 
The hands can stutter sometimes, which does not affect the accuracy, but also does not increase one's confidence when noticed. Additionally, the second's hand can jitter when the time is set. No major issues, but the simplicity of the design is evident that way. Important note, this movement usually provides a date, which is not represented with the window on the dial on this model, so-called phantom date. Some are put off by the idea of having a working date just hidden away. You can still feel the haptic feedback when pulling the crown through the first quick setting option, and you have to make sure to end up on the second one to set the time. I can personally look past it, and of course there is also a date version available. The whole movement is nothing to write home about in particular, but a solid choice for their price point. Speaking of which, considering current prices, this exact version, the vintage themed one, is unavailable, but the Diver 1 still exists alongside a date and also a GMT version, a small but well-balanced range of options, all of which feature their signature case design at quite an affordable price starting at around 500 euros for the date and diver in 2022 and up to 1000 euros for the GMT version. All in all, this is a micro brand I would personally wear, since the design just speaks to me and does not follow any standard template. What about you? I am interested how other collectors who probably and usually focus as much on vintage as myself feel about a design driven project like this and its short but interesting background. I would appreciate if you leave a comment and see you next time on the Time Warn channel. This video was not sponsored, by the way. Bye.